after seeing Yuji Sadori's new technique, I've come up with six crazy theories on how he's going to use them to not only defeat Sukuna but end the series as a whole. And as the video progresses, each theory will be getting crazier and crazier. So trust me, you're definitely going to want to stick around to the end of this one. Because let's just say it's not looking good for Sukuna or Tengen with what we know about Yuji right now. And hey, if you're a Jujutsu Kaisen fan, be sure to subscribe to the channel. There's a ton of JJK videos just like this. Theories, what ifs, versus battles, and a ton of live streams too. So if you like JJK, I would recommend subscribing. You're not going to regret it. And thanks to the honored one and special group members of the channel, Lisa Kaisen and that guy Trey. Thank you guys very much. Okay, so the first theory is crazy, but it's by far the tamest. So this theory is that pretty much because Yuji ate the death painting wounds that are his brothers, he's actually awakened his innate blood manipulation technique or the technique that Kenjaku has to body swap. So pretty much the way we know how curse techniques work in Jujutsu Kaisen is that they're passed down from generation to generation. And actually sometimes there are mutations that change, especially because it happens in the modern day. It's very possible that Yuji's may be actually a mutation of Kenjaku's technique. And because he only became a sorcerer recently, say not more than six months ago, it's possible that only now he's actually starting to awaken his curse technique that he's had from birth. In the same way that there are many people like Junpei or Higuruma who have had curse techniques sleeping within them from birth, but could never activate them because they just were never sorcerers. So they never even knew that they had them until they were activated via Kenjaku and Ideal Transfiguration. The same could be true of Yuji. And it's possible that now he's actually gone cursed energy for a couple months. And furthermore, eating the death painting wound, which actually do contain Kenjaku's blood as well as his brother's blood. And all the death painting wounds do have curse techniques relating to blood manipulation too. It's possible that he's gotten a curse technique. Again, similar to Kenjaku's body swapping, but now it's a different variation where he doesn't actually need to pop out his brain and swap brains of someone. But maybe actually by exchanging blood. So let's say Kusakabe had drank Yuji's blood, he's able to swap bodies with him. And an extension of this is that as we saw of Kenjaku's own case, just by taking someone's body, even if you move to a new body or you're back to your own body, you would actually keep their techniques because their techniques are engraved onto your body as they were engraved on Kenjaku's brain. So it's possible Yuji may be getting other people's techniques along with his own and he actually might be getting the death painting groom's curse technique. The second theory is that Yuji is currently using perhaps not a curse technique, but a technique that he's learned from reading Yuki's soul book and also from having a deeper understanding of the soul since he housed Sukuna himself and he's a cursed object. And now he's got a technique where he can actually swap souls of people. So obviously we saw Yuji actually swap bodies with Kusakabe. How he did this, we don't actually know. But now that we know he can do this, what if Yuji actually, let's say he eats the one finger that Gojo has, which actually I don't think Gojo has that, but that one finger of Sukuna, I have many theories for that. That's for another video. But let's say Yuji actually eats this one finger, or even if he doesn't and he has no fingers, what if Yuji can actually swap souls with Sukuna, or actually specifically Megumi in this case, since it's Megumi's body. And pretty much he would swap out the one soul that he has inside of him, the 20 fingers that Megumi has. Or even if he has no souls inside of him, it is confirmed that Yuji is now a cursed object and he's actually a cursed object soaked in Sukuna's cursed energy. And Gege actually specifically shows a Sukuna finger when making this comparison for Yuji. So what if he basically snatches away the 20 fingers inside of Megumi and puts it inside of himself? And because, you know, he's Yuji, the perfect vessel, he can just rein in 20 fingers. And of course, knowing Yuji and his own words from chapter 200, so it's very recent, he hasn't changed his mentality, he would actually take his own life to end Sukuna right there. Which would be anticlimactic if it happens, but it's been built up so much since the very beginning of the series about how Yuji's going to die alone and how he's going to be basically the one to take his own life to end Sukuna. It's been said so many times, it's been foreshadowed so much, it really could be the way it ends. Or maybe he actually swaps Megami's soul, so Yuji would go into Megami's body and Megami's soul would actually go into Yuji's body. It would be really weird to see, but it might happen, who knows? And he takes his own life inside of Megami. Regardless, it's all very dark, obviously, Yuji. It's crazy to say, but he's only 15, 16, and the fact that he's got this very dark mentality, it is depressing to see, to say the least. The third theory is that what if Yuji's soul swapping technique is actually a heavenly restriction? So the way we know heavenly restrictions work is that they're basically forced upon someone at birth and it's not of choice. What if Yuji was actually able to forcibly make a heavenly restriction? And we know that heavenly restrictions are just binding vows, but very strong binding vows. And again, ones that are forced. It's possible that via whatever method, he's actually forced a binding vow upon himself and he sacrificed something very greatly because that's the consequences of all heavenly restrictions. And in exchange for this, he gets a soul swapping heavenly restriction. The reason this works thematically is because in JJK we know there are three things, the body, the soul, and the mind. Mekamaru's heavenly restriction is like a mind type of heavenly restriction, where he can actually control things from afar via his mind. Maki and Toji's is the body, where they lose cursed energy, but they actually get a very strong body in exchange. And the third one is the soul. We actually haven't ever gotten a soul heavenly restriction. What if Yuji is the one who gets it? The reason this makes sense is because Yuji, even to Mahito, said, I am you and you are me, we are parallels, and there's such a 
deep parallel between him and Mahito. What if he actually becomes just like Mahito and he gets a soul based ability and this is to be the soul heavenly restriction. So he might actually be able to use a form of ideal transfiguration or maybe his own variant of it. And maybe one of the techniques of this new heavenly restriction is soul swapping because again it's a heavenly restriction of the soul. It would really complete the trio of getting a heavenly restriction for all three things. Now the fourth theory and it is getting crazy here. What if Yuji is actually a Sukuna club? The reason I bring this up is because there is a very weird connection between Yuji and Sukuna that goes beyond even just the vessel. What if there's a reason that Yuji is the perfect vessel for Sukuna? And actually we know from Kenjaku's own words is that he was the one who forced Yuji to eat a Sukuna finger back in chapter one. Yes, it seemed like it was voluntarily a choice of Yuji's, but the way that the universe actually interprets it is that Kenjaku was the one who actually made Yuji eat the finger. And we also know from Sukuna's own words when he calls Kenjaku creepy or disgusting for what he did with Yuji when he realizes who Yuji truly is, you know, he's from that time. What would actually make Sukuna think this? And there's also another line when he actually eats the Shinbutsu mummy and he says, oh, this is ironic. So what if Yuji is a clone of Sukuna or a clone of Sukuna's twin brother? Because that still needs to tie in somehow because one of the biggest lore plot lines of Sukuna is that he has a twin brother in the real world and he had two heads. Maybe it will never be brought, but it'd be very interesting if it does. The reason I say a clone of Sukuna is because of the Shinbutsu mummy that we saw that Tengen had. And this Shinbutsu mummy looks exactly, and I mean exactly, like Sukuna. It's possible that this body is just Sukuna's body from the past, but it's just interesting how Sukuna's choice of wording, both in all translations, so TCB and Viz, is that he actually refers to the mummy not as himself, but just a separate sort of entity. He's like, oh, this Shinbutsu mummy, ironic. Or in the Viz, he says, mummification. Hehe, <laughs> I hope you like my voice acting right there. He doesn't say my body or any of those lines. He does say ironic, so maybe he is referring to that, but the choice of wording just seems intentional. And this would be what Tengen was hiding from everyone else. Kenjaku did say that one of the things that Tengen was hiding was that he's technically the game master because all the Cullen game barriers are actually bond barriers that are made off of the foundations of the barriers that Tengen has all around Japan. So Tengen could actually end the Cullen game had he wanted to, but of course the byproduct of this was that cursed spirits would just run rampant across all of Japan and pretty much even the rest of the world. World, so there was a reason why he didn't do that. But I do believe one of the other things that he was hiding from them was that he had done experiments in the past. And the reason I theorize that Tengen is this type of person is because he has such a deep connection to Kenjaku, who he himself is a scientist. So it's likely that Tengen was actually a scientist in the past as well, and somehow he got a piece of Sukuna's DNA, and that's actually how he was able to survive without a star plasma vessel. Maybe using what he'd learned over the thousand years of experiments and creating Sukuna clones, maybe that's actually how he created this body for himself, or this evolution from himself. And what if Yuji is actually one of these experiments, or at least Kenjaku's version of these experiments. And again, whether it's Sukuna's brother or Sukuna himself, this clone that he's making, it's possible since Kenjaku gave birth to Yuji himself, so he easily could have tampered with the baby while he was pregnant with it, and it would just line up so well with everything about Yuji being a perfect vessel. We know Megami's also a strong vessel, but Yuji's the only one who's ever been said to be a perfect, true vessel. And it's possible that Yuji's bloodline or his descendants are actually people who have the DNA or offsprings from a Sukuna clone. We know that Gege himself has said that Sukuna's never had a wife, and he's never had children, so he's never had direct descendants, but it's just weird how Yuji's whole family tree looks so much like true form Sukuna. It's not just because Yuji's his vessel, his granddad, his dad, and himself, it's a striking resemblance with the actual Sukuna from the Heian era. So it's possible that a clone, or maybe even Sukuna's twin, had an offspring, or had descendants, or maybe descendants were made from someone who had this sort of DNA, and that's why Yuji actually looks like Sukuna, is a perfect vessel, and all these things. It's a crazy theory, I know, but I told you the theories are gonna get really crazy as we go. And now for this theory, yes, crazier than the one before. It's about Yuji's ascension to pretty much godhood and how he is the one who's going to end all of cursed energy in all of Japan and bring true peace to the Jujutsu world. Now, where do I even start with this? It actually does tie back to a question that an honored one member of the channel had actually asked specifically. He's guys and asked, do you think sorcerers will still be relevant after the series ends? And I actually think the answer is going to be no. And this ties to Yuji and what's going to become of him with the merger. Now there's this big theory about how Yuji's going to become the perfect vessel for the merger, how Kenjaku actually made him for that and that was his whole purpose. And I hope I'm not mistaken, but at least the very first person I saw actually say this was No Operator. So shout out to No Operator for this fantastic theory. But the whole point of this theory, right, is that Kenjaku basically forces this upon Yuji because that's the whole reason he made Yuji. That's why he's the perfect vessel. But what if Yuji actually does this on purpose? Now that we see Yuji as a technique, whether it's body swapping or soul swapping, well, soul swapping would actually work really great in this situation. What if he actually swaps the soul of the merger or puts his own soul into the merger and he actually does it on purpose to basically not let the merger win or not let the merger end everything. In this case, he would be fighting in the merger to not let it go rampant or to end everyone in Japan. Now you might be questioning, but is there even going to be enough time for this? The moment the merger appears, it's pretty much game over. It's GG since the merger just instantly affects everyone in Japan who aren't sorcerers. Well, the 
key to this is actually Yuki. Remember back when Yuki was talking to Tengen? Even though all the Star Plasma vessels assimilated with Tengen and are supposed to be dead, Yuki can actually still hear their voices. Even the vessels from 800 and 400 years ago, Yuki can actually hear their consciousness, their souls inside of Tengen. So yes, we did see Yuki die and she, just like Kiri Yoshikawa says, bites the dust. That's just for her physical body. Her soul was still around and actually very close to where Tengen's real body is. What if just like all the previous Star Plasma vessels, her soul, because again, she was a previous Star Plasma vessel, actually went inside of Tengen and merged with Tengen and became another part of it. And unlike the other Star Plasma vessels who were inside of Tengen's body, Yuki is someone who, again, as we saw, is well aware of the soul and has done extensive research on the soul. Yuki might actually be able to have some influence or fight back in the soul, akin to Stars and Stripes of how she revolted inside of All For One. And this might actually give the main cast enough time to come up with a plan to just fight back against the merger since Yuki might be stalling the merger for a while and in this time Yuji could say oh you know what it's like a Goku moment of cell I gotta sacrifice myself he goes into the merger and alongside him and Yuki they fight inside of the merger and they basically win and this is where I answer Isekaisen's question I actually think since Yuki is now connected to all these citizens in Japan not sorcerers but just regular citizens she might actually be able to end cursed spirits permanently remember what was said of Ghetto and Yuki cursed spirits actually only come from regular people and civilians with the exceptions of very special cases such as vengeful cursed spirits that are born from sorcerers, because sorcerers have control over cursed energy which is just negative energy, they themselves don't actually create cursed spirits normally. They don't let this negative energy out of them, but instead cursed spirits are actually born from the negativity of everyday normal people. Well since we know that the merger is connected to all of these regular people, Yuki alongside Yuji's help could actually take away all of the negativity or the ability to pass on negativity from these people. So cursed energy would still be around for the sorcerers, they would still have their curse techniques, but cursed spirits would no longer be able to be born. This is actually great for so many reasons it wraps up so many arcs, plot lines, and it narratively ties the story like a beautiful bow tie, and it would end the cycle of loneliness. And now for the final one, the sixth and craziest theory that I do have, and it's actually that Nobuda will be the deus ex machina and end the series here now. The thing is, the way we know that Nobuda's curse technique works, regardless of how much defense or how strong the other person's soul is, her curse technique resonance will do equal damage if she actually finds a way to hit you. So there's actually a theory going around that perhaps Nobuda will use the one finger of Sakuna to kill Sakuna that way. The issue is, it's just not going to be strong enough to kill Sukuna this way. We actually saw this with Esso's arm, where she hits the arm of Esso's, and all it does is pretty much stun him and do damage, but it doesn't kill him. And even when something's connected to her own body, we even saw Esso and Chetsu say it's not going to be able to kill us. But that doesn't mean her technique can't kill people. The reason her technique wouldn't have been able to kill Esso and Chetsu is because in that situation, she would have needed to basically kill herself to kill them. And even he himself said, our poison will actually kill you first. But what if Nobuda actually uses her resonance on Yuji, who again, as I said earlier in the video, he is a cursed object soaked in Sukuna's own cursed energy and he is just like a Sukuna finger of the example Gege Gege. We've seen Yuji is willing to sacrifice his life. What if she comes at the end and she headshots Yuji consensually, you know, she's not gonna just do it against Yuji's will. And because she's hitting Yuji right in the head, this would transfer right onto Sukuna's and it directly attacks the user's soul. Now it might not even kill Sukuna even though I think it should, but it would at least do great damage. Or even to the point where she could actually just keep stun locking Sukuna and doing major damage to him if she just keeps hitting Yuji in the arm or leg or something and it transfer to Sukuna. Again, equal damage. And actually, she's the perfect counter to the merger as well, because the way her curse technique works, it's distributed evenly, so if she just hits one part of the merger or one thing that has the merger's cursed energy, or it's related to the merger, boom, it just hits all of the merger and everyone connected to the merger too. I just want to say, it's just so interesting how Gege shelved Nobuda randomly, out of nowhere, and for no reason, and he hasn't confirmed that she's dead, but also not that she's well and safe, so she's most likely right now in a coma, and it just makes no sense at all for Gege to just randomly shelve Nobuda and just put her on the back end for no reason. But it does when you actually consider, had Nobuda been around right now, she would have ended the series. She just perfectly counters the merger. She also would have ended Sukuna right now because Yuji's connected to it. She pretty much is a massive deus ex machina if Gege chooses to use her. I just guarantee you, while Gege was planning for the rest of the story, he probably realized that Nobuda, her technique just causes too many plot holes and too many issues about it solving too many things too early. So I just think there's a reason she was shelved and she could be brought back to end it all. And hey, let me know if you agree with any of these theories. I know some of them are absolutely wild and crazy, but there's gotta be at least one you agree with, right? So let me know which one of the six that you actually liked and you think might be possible. And if you did enjoy the video, it would really help out if you leave a like too. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe. I mean, you watched this far, so you're clearly a JJK fan. And again, a ton of JJK videos just like this and live streams too. So you're not gonna regret subscribing and leaving a like too. Thank you very much if you do either of those or both, thank you. And of course, thank you to all the channel members too. You guys make these videos possible. Thank you very much. If you see your name on the screen, you're an absolute legend.
legend. But that's all. Take care and have a nice day, guys. Peace.